How much does still get them ready? It was about time. Those are Kyle McCord's war words as he wrapped up the post-game press conference here. Welcome to the Notebook at uh, Ohio Stadium. The Buckeyes are winners, 63 to 10, over Western Kentucky. The last two weeks, first two games of the season, didn't quite meet the standard. I think everybody in here could acknowledge that really for the first time that uh, they knew that they could play better. Now we had talked about a slow ramp up and a slow build, and that was all true. Uh, but then Ryan Day said on Sunday of last week they had to put the switch in practice which they did the intensity was ramped up that was with an eye on notre dame which is in one week's time uh ohio state is three and zero, so they got the job done uh as we wrap wrap up here in uh, the press room a, a definitely a much happier team uh you you win in such emphatic fashion you can start feeling good in that momentum i think you didn't want to go into Week, th week four at Notre Dame, feeling like, well, you haven't played your best football and now is the time, you absolutely have to do it. Uh, this is a, let's take a further look at it. All the food is already gone. This is pretty sweet. Imagine coming in here as an offensive tackle and not wanting to play for Ohio State and you see that. Uh, the offensive line though did play much better this week. You look at Josh Fryer, I think he, his fist bump there, er, fist pumping there early on told you that some of the violence that Ohio State had asked for uh, and needed maybe from the offensive line was showing up. Uh, Travion Henderson getting loose for a couple of touchdowns there. The pass protection was good. Uh, one penalty there for Josh Simmons for a false start, but if that's the nitpicking that can be done, Ohio State can live with that. So again, 63 to 10, we're going to dive into that and see what's going on out here. A pretty celebratory group as you see the Buckeyes are still trying to get on some of the bus and get out of here. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Denzel. Hey, you wouldn't have to keep doing post game if you'd stop having such good games. You know that, right? <laughs> Denzel Burke with a hand, handful of PBUs. How are you, sir? Yeah. Do you, do you have a snap or no? Not yet. We're, 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 we're diving into the notebook. It's going to be positive. I promise you. I, I, love you guys. I mean, don't you feel better? Don't I you do. feel better about 6310? First, first quarter, I was getting texts from like Lightman and all these guys. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, hey, come on. 6310 will do it, right? Yeah, all right. So, again, a more exuberant. Can, can I get a what? Can I get a picture? Yes. I just, I love you guys. No, you don't. Oh. Get out of here. All right. You can tell this is a much happier program this week. A long time coming. Another beautiful suit on the way out. Kyle. Um, I, I'm going. Yeah. Do you have to practice your dance moves for pregame? No, I, I do it because they're getting that reaction. No, right. It seems like you ramped up the, like, more elaborate today. It looks great. All right, that's Kyle McCord. Uh, 318 yards, 19 of 23. Oh, what were they eating over here? Was it pizza again, Berm? We need to grab some. Starving. Uh, yeah, Donato's again. And a smoothie. Are you thirsty, Berm? No, he's not. Bassford is cleaning out the pizza over here. There's... Just still hot? Yeah. All right. How many are you going to take? The press box needs them. <laughs> Press box pizza. All right. Uh, get, so the, the mood is very different in the horseshoe, as you can tell. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. The dancing man, Kyle McCord. As I said, 19 of 23, 318 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, his words, again, that we said on there, it is about time. That was echoed. Ameka Ibuka talked to him in the post game about, hey, was there actually any frustration in the first two games? Because we... Ryan Day seemed so calm uh, and at ease that the results were going to come for Ohio State. And he was right about that. But he did, but Emeka Edbuka said, yes, there, when you come to Ohio State, you expect to perform at an elite level every time out. And for a lot of the reasons that we talked about over the previous two weeks, they felt like they weren't, they weren't doing that. They're not content to win by 20 at Indiana, although you can make a case that most programs should be. They definitely didn't feel like 35 to seven against Youngstown State was the best that they could do. And you can understand why they would feel that way 
when their goal is to win the Big Ten, to win the rivalry again, to get to the national championship game and win it. Does beating Western Kentucky 63-10 to mean that everything is perfect and that they are right on track to do that? Maybe, maybe not, but it certainly beats the alternative. This is a situation now for Ohio State where they get to go in to the next week focusing on a top 10 matchup on the road against Notre Dame, and they don't have to sit there and answer a bunch, a bunch of questions like, what's wrong with the defense? Well, looked like there were a couple turnovers and some that went for touchdowns. Uh, pass rush started finding its footing there in the second quarter and getting home a little bit more. You can't complain about that outing that much. That was a team that could create a lot of problems through the air. We talked about it. They were never likely to win the game, but to hold them to, to 10 points and shut them out in the second half, uh, you can take a lot of value out of that. Kyle McCord, start number three. Uh, beyond that, Marvin Harrison continuing to be a real, real problem. Whoa, look at the lights go out here, trying to kick us out of the horseshoe early. Uh, Marvin Harrison, he's really, really good. So is Emeka Ibuka. Uh, Cade Stover making a lot of plays. The running game find tra finding traction. I mentioned, you know, Josh Fryer and some of those blocks and the success that the offensive line had. This was a look at the all-around version of Ohio State kicking into a gear that like, they hadn't shown yet, but I think all of us were waiting for that to finally happen, uh, and indeed, it did. So, uh, if you're keeping tabs at home, the Buckeyes are now 3-0 and on coin tosses. Keep an eye on that. Very important stat. If you're gambling and betting on the coin toss, don't. That's not a good idea. But they are 3-0, and and they again took the football, uh, not deferring, were able to score, set the tone early. Uh, Ryan Day showing some faith. Fourth and five on that opening drive. Key play there. You know, Kyle McCord, and again, the guy that I talked to in the postgame, Emeka Ibuka, the throw, had to get it out of his hand. It's fourth down. He throws it high, and Emeka Ibuka goes up, makes a big play. Next play, next play, Travion goes around the left end and scores a touchdown. And then, uh, you know, from there, uh, the offense, you know, there was a fumble that came after that. It was a weird play. Ohio State goes max protect. They send in Luke Montgomery in the Bison package. They only send two guys out on the route. The pressure still gets home. Kyle McCord standing in the pocket with nowhere to, uh, I didn't, it didn't look to me anywhere to go with the football. Uh, and then his uh, strip sack, they lose that. Not the finest moment for the Ohio State offense, but something to learn from. Uh, Player of the game for me, I'm going to, I mean, the guy I talked to uh, walking through there, Denzel Burke, uh, man, he is all over the HOBs. That's not actually what they go on the stat sheet as those are pass breakups. I thought that he got shorted one in the first half. I thought that he had three, he was credited with two, goes out there and uh, makes a forced fumble as well, coming up to stop the run. That was something that we talked about last week. He is playing at a really high level right now. That is and critically important as well. Um, what is Notre Dame going to try and do? Find success. They're going to, you know, protect Sam Hartman. Again, this matchup with Ohio State's defensive line, we'll probably still be talking about it to some extent, but they, they want to be able to throw. That's why they brought Hartman in. They weren't able to do that against Ohio State enough last year, and uh, Denzel Burke will be a key part of that. Jordan Hancock as well, playing a lot for Ohio State. Uh, he, uh, he's got a forced fumble in there that set the tone. So you look around, playmakers in the secondary, that's what you have to have. Last year, the BIA moniker was didn't fit, didn't apply, it didn't work for them, uh, and now they're they're working towards that. Can we say that it's all the way back at this point? Probably not, but they the signs are all there. And again, a big deal with Denzel Burke, Jordan Hancock, Lathan Ransom uh, was wound up being questionable for this game, but he did play through it. Uh, he, last year, uh, around November, Maryland game. He's got the thumb injury, plays through that, gets a cast on it. Looked like something again with his hand or wrist or arm. I don't know specifically about that, but we saw that uh, through pregame. Played through it. Again, that's a critical deal going forward against Notre Dame next week. Um, so you can check that off the, the list. Josh Proctor returned. He had a heck of a game there back in the secondary for the Buckeyes again. Uh, another drop could have been a pick six. That is about the theme of it for six years for Josh Proctor. He can go fly around. He had a couple other, uh, another pass breakup in addition to that one, uh, and was, you know, headhunting again with some tackles. Very impressive stuff from him. 
that's going to be important for Ohio State getting ready for Notre Dame. That's going to be a much more physical game than any of these first three. Like that's, if I keep talking a lot about South Bend and what's looming next Saturday, there's a reason for that. These first three games were a preseason schedule and a preseason approach. Berm mentioned it uh, in front of the camera right over there a few hours ago that if that's the way that you're going to do it and the first two games and the, the final score and the margin of victory doesn't matter that much, well, by week three and ahead of week four, then you need to be playing some of your best football. Not your very best football. You'd rather that come against Notre Dame and Penn State and Michigan. You don't have to do it every single week. I've talked to a lot of coaches over the years, and one of the things that they will tell you, you can only dial up the ultimate, very best elite effort a certain number of times throughout the year. You know, you can argue whether that should be the case or why that's the case, but you're, when you're dealing with 18 to 21, 22-year-olds, you're not going to get the exact same level every single week. That's the ultimate goal, but you can look and see even places like Alabama or Georgia. That's very hard to do, uh, and you don't want to waste them those some of those performances when you don't need them. But Ohio State did need one, in my opinion, where it was finding its footing, playing some of its best football, working out the kinks, throwing its weight behind Kyle McCord, letting Steel Chambers and Tommy Eichenberg do their thing and make a big impact, just so that you know all that rust is gone. They've got those successful reps under their belt, and then they go into Notre Dame with a lot of confidence. And I just, as you, as you leave the horseshoe tonight, and the towers lit up in scarlet, and, and as the bell goes off, you, you know that this is a team that feels much better about itself. And it didn't have a lot of reason to feel bad. It just, you knew that the improvement was going to have to come at some point. Uh, it did. Uh, again, just go back to Kyle McCord saying it's about time. A note of uh, some of the people that, and personnel that played, Amari Abor, uh, he had a tackle for loss in the fourth quarter. Why did I write that in the notebook? I can't believe that he's playing for Ohio State. He had surgery during training camp. He missed uh, the majority of last season with the leg injury, and I thought, well, this is good. probably another long-term issue. Could be a season ender. It, it was not. And Ryan Day said he was going to be out for months. Yeah, and he is back in, uh, you know, what, five weeks, six weeks? and then gets in there and make a tackle for loss. So add that as a potential other depth piece. You know, some of those guys got meaningful playing time in the fourth quarter, Mitchell Melton in there. Uh, you know, a lot of freshman defensive linemen, Jermaine Matthews. Uh, what, right, so there, this, was, this was flagged for excessive celebration. And it probably was, but I think it was really cool anyway. So Jermaine Matthews jumps her out on this sideline right over here. Comes back, pick six. Everybody is going crazy on the bench. Mickey Marotti, I, I was already down here because the game was over. Snap judgments were written by this time in the game and ready to be posted except for the final score, which I had to update while I was standing down here. Thankfully, I was able to do that. So Mickey Marotti comes out to, I don't know, about here. He's saying, stay back, stay back. We'll celebrate when he gets to the sideline. Don't get a penalty, don't get a penalty. But guys like Mike Hall, Marvin Harrison Jr., the stars of this team, JT Tuimoloau, they couldn't be held back. They all came out to celebrate and and dap up uh, a freshman making a huge play, um, one of you know his second game in the horseshoe, a pick six. The fact that there were so many veteran Buckeyes who've done that a million times, uh, not a million, uh, that would be a record, who've done that dozens of times, that they feel so good for one of their young teammates making a play like that. Yes, it was a flag. It was a, a it was worth it to get that flag, in my opinion, because of what it means as they wrap their arms around a, a young guy making an impact who, who knows what that can mean for him down the road. He's not going to jump into this mix ahead of Denzel Burke and Jordan Hancock and Davison and uh, but it, it's an example of doing it, and those reps are going to count, and Ohio State got those for a lot of people, and that's a big deal heading into next week against Notre Dame. We're going to have so much coverage as we get ready for that. Make sure that I didn't miss anything that's uh, important over here. Two weeks in a row for Marvin Harrison Jr. setting a career long and touchdown reception. Uh, 75 yards was the one today. Quite a deep ball there from Kyle McCord. I don't think arm strength was ever something that we questioned about him, but it was nice to see you know, Marvin destroys some coverage and Kyle McCord is able to take to capitalize when he takes the top off. Uh, another defensive touchdown. A lot of talk about Steel Chambers not coming up with that fumble that was bouncing towards the end zone. Tyleek Williams dives into the pile. Uh, as Ryan Day said, uh, like a dog going after a bone. Uh, and he's, Tyleek Williams, a really strong start through three weeks, and now he's got a touchdown to his credit. 
in that second quarter barrage at one point there was 21 points in six minutes and 15 seconds that looks a lot like the ohio state offense that i think everybody's come to expect and they're going to have to do it against uh you know take another step forward and do it against an opponent that uh, is perhaps a little more equipped to stop it there, we're already hearing the matchup games talent equated the, those words were already being used in that building right up there that's where we started this journey on the notebook this week and we're going to wrap it up down here uh, still more to come you can find snappy jays uh, on the youtube channel there at the podcast and everywhere else you get uh, your audio we'll have sunday blitz with zach Bourne. everything else right as scheduled including uh thursday night of next week you can look for weekend kickoff but that's getting ahead of it we're going to wrap up some things here with ohio state beating western kentucky 63 to 10. way more coverage coming your way thanks for joining us here on the notebook i will talk to you later